you. What are you guys feeling about this matchup? What are your predictions? Before we get started here, what are your predictions? Palpatine or Boba? Looks like we're blue. Palpatine. Palp. So Palpatine getting some love here. So we've got Elijah on the right with Palpatine, and then we've got Nick piloting the Boba Green deck. And this is round four. This is round four. We're at the start of round four. So we've got Palpatine with the initiative to start the game. You see Season Shore Trooper coming down for Nick. No early play for Elijah. And I'm assuming in this matchup, if you're on Boba here, you've got to try to be as aggressive as possible. You know, once it gets to the late game, Palpatine is going to completely take control. We've got Short Trooper coming in for two damage, and then the resupply for Nick is going to ramp up. So we'll see Boba very likely being deployed here on this upcoming turn. Elijah still claiming the initiative and no plays yet for Elijah. He's got to be holding on to some big stuff. We get, if he can make it past this mid-game barrage of attacks that we're probably likely going to start seeing from Nick, and he can get towards the late game, Palpatine can take over. So right away, Shore Trooper into base. Boba deployed. And Elijah quickly responds with a Death Trooper, throwing two damage onto Boba Fett. That does take him down to just 5 HP remaining. And it would put him in takedown range. That is a great question. would love to, to know what exactly the Palpatine player has in hand here. No early plays. He does finally able to get something on the board, but Bosk is going to respond and ambush the Death Trooper right off the board. Boba into base for four. That's eight damage on early for Elijah. And two resources ready, but those two extra resources did not make an, a difference here. Elijah reclaims the initiative, and we'll move on to the next turn. So great early board presence for Nick, and no surprise to see. Here's the takedown. That's exactly what Elijah was setting up last turn, the Death Trooper onto Boba Fett, getting that two damage on. And the takedown onto Boba Fett is a, a big play here. However, you still have six damage being shown on board for Nick, and he's yet to play a card this turn. Elijah up to 16 damage on his base. What is Nick going to do this turn? Here comes a Consortium Star Viper. And then he just passes. So that's not the best turn for Nick with the, the opening he's got here. You probably would have loved to see something like a Fett's Fire Spray. You want to put a little bit more pressure on because right now the door is wide open. Here comes Elijah. He's going to play the Super Laser Technician in hopes to get Palpatine out next turn. Get him out of turn early. 
but only three open resources for Elijah and 16 damage on. Certainly a tough spot. And here comes Waylay onto the technician. And then Elijah will just replay that technician right away. But that does exhaust all of his resources here. Boba action ability, or the trigger ability, off of the waylay is going to ready the resource for Nick. And now seasoned Shore Trooper going in for four damage with six or more resources. He gets the extra power, and then Bosk with four more, so... 24 damage on Elijah's base. Only a super laser technician on the board. This is an incredibly tough spot to be in for Elijah. And you still have five open resources on the other side of the board. And a Star Viper still ready to attack. An interesting play from Nick here. It's just going to... Use No Good to Me Dead to lock down the Super Laser Technician, which is actually a beautiful play because it's going to essentially keep Technician from trading into Bosk and ramping up to Palpatine. Another Death Trooper could get the Technician off the board, but Elijah draws, and this game is just too far gone. He's going to scoop up here in the first game, and Boba Green doing some damage. And it's a rough start for Elijah and Palpatine going to the sideboard now. Probably going to see some, some cards come in that can help him in the early game because we just didn't see anything much from Elijah early in that game and he fell behind so fast. Yeah, and as far as Chad is concerned. I think you guys are right. That hand was not mulliganed and unfortunately did not go well at all. So Nick, with a wonderful start here in round four. Palpatine and Elijah with some work to do. And he has to hope that these sideboard moves here are going to help him get right back into this match. Uh, to Savage, Savage Dragon? No, I did not. I was just kind of going off a of chat there. Pretty sure he did not mulligan. Just kind of going off of what chat was saying there on the no mulligan. And yes, Nick was the winner in that first game with Boba Green. They shuffle up, get ready for game number two. For chat, what are you what are you hoping to see here? What kind of cards do you think Elijah might be needing to side in here to, to get back into this? Absolutely, Elijah's going to need some early plays. He's going to need to be able to certainly contend with the board. He was unable to do that the first two turns last game. And that is just such a big tempo loss against Boba. So 
Nick with a mulligan. And it looks like Elijah choosing to keep this hand. He will start with the initiative. It is, it is that time. It is about lunchtime. I'm sure these players are starting to get to that point where you may need a little break, get some food, get your mind refocused a little bit. And let's see if Elijah has a turn one play here in game two. And Chat calls it Inferno 4. Turn 1, a much better start for Palpatine. Inferno 4 going to allow him to put one back on top and one at the bottom. So, great way to cycle, get the cards you need. And then a cartel spacer in response for Nick, which is just simply going to be a 2 3 body here, unable to get off the exhaust effect. Okay, so Stephen, if you can hear me, I think the names might be switched here. Maybe Elijah on the left, Nick on the right. But we know Boba is up. And we see the Inferno 4 come across for 2 damage into the Cartel Spacer. And Spacer going to hit, hit base for 2 here. Uh, for Max, Max had to step away. He will be back shortly. As they were leaving the hospital, he will get set back up when he gets home, and he'll be back with us. If not by the end of this round, he should be back with us for next round. Okay, so chat letting us know. So it is Nick on the right, Elijah on the left. So we've got... Nick playing Palpatine, Elijah on Boba Fett. So Boba Fett now in play. No, no unit there on that second turn for Nick. And now the initiative still sits with Nick, but Got to be careful here. Doesn't want to fall behind once again. And here comes Power of the Dark Side to take out the Boba Fett. Elijah going to pay three for a seventh Fleet Defender. Trying to apply some more pressure in space and the initiative will stay on Nick's side of the table. So Nick will start us out. We know we're going to see Boba this turn. Nick trying to Decide how he goes about this turn and Boba Fett. Here comes the super laser technician. In game one, the super laser technician was locked down. Nick was unable to ramp to Palpatine. And seventh fleet, fleet defender just goes three to base, so five damage on. Still a lot that can happen on this turn for Elijah. And it looks like Nick either claimed the initiative there or passed it over. Boba Fett now down on the board.
And here comes Boba Leader. And so, you know, uh, Nick had just passed, not claimed the initiative. And Entrenched, you know, he was holding the two resources, holding Entrenched, and that is a huge play. The Entrenched immediately put on the Boba Fett Leader unit. And that will keep Boba from going for extra damage to base, and Elijah just claims the initiative in response. Definitely a better start this game for Nick. Elijah does have the board, but Laser Technician can still help ramp into Palpatine. He's been able to make a few more early plays in this game. Elijah with plenty of options. And he's just going to attack with the non-leader Boba Fett unit. Three damage on the base, and then here comes the super laser technician. Two damage to Boba Fett leader unit. And that'll put Nick up to seven resources. And then Elijah back with three damage with the attack from 7th Fleet Defender. And Darth Vader. Darth Vader, big play here. That's going to... Bring out Death Trooper with Darth Vader. So definitely a lot more action going on this time around for Palpatine. The Death Trooper will put two extra damage onto the Boba Leader unit, and then Vader will ambush off Little Boba. And now three damage onto Vader. So big play here for Nick. Helping him stabilize the board. For Elijah, plenty of options here. You still have all of your resources available. And while Boba cannot hit the base, Boba can still take out one of these units in the ground arena for Nick. Elijah's going to pay five here. Looks like he's considering playing the Bosk. Maybe it's Battalion. He's got a couple options at five. And he's going to use the Energy Conversion Lab Epic Action. So that is going to bring Steadfast Battalion in. His own attack will trigger. And it looks like he just goes into Vader. And then Boba Fett will remove a Death Trooper from the board. Boba Fett, 10 HP with that entrenched on him, and he still has four remaining. So Boba Fett still able to do some work here, even though he's not able to apply direct pressure to the base. And at the start of the turn, System Patrol Craft immediately coming down for Nick, which is a big play with the 7th Fleet Defender in space for Elijah. And 
Yeah, great call from chat there. Was some damage missed. The overwhelm on Steadfast Battalion as Vader did have three damage on him. So we are missing some damage on Nick's base. Should be an extra three at least. And I think they're getting that worked out right now. So it looks like we've got things straightened out. I think he did give the extra on attack trigger, the plus two, plus two from Steadfast Battalion. I believe he gave it to Boba Fett. So that means that just one extra damage would go through to Nick's base. And here comes Overwhelming Barrage, which will remove the system patrol craft. And the 7th Flint Fleet Defender, a very real threat this turn. Now a 5 power in space. But Nick, he does still have 4 resources available. And it's going to be Emperor's Royal Guard. So a sentinel on the ground. Very likely to see Boba go in and remove the Royal Guard. It would, would be a trade. And so he's just going to take the 7th Fleet Defender. And go 5 to base. So now 17 damage on... Nick's base, we got, Elijah's got to figure a way out here. 13 more damage to take this match here in round four. And he's going to use Palp's ability to remove the shield from the 7th Fleet Defender. Palpatine very likely about to deploy. Nick is at eight resources. About to see the big guy come in. So it looks like we're moving on here. Nick has just reclaimed the initiative. Resupply down into the resource row for Elijah. Very much different game here in game two. While there is no damage on Elijah's base, Palpatine has certainly stayed in this one. It should be interesting to see how this plays out. And here comes Vigilance. So it looks like Vigilance will remove the 7th Fleet Defender. It's going to defeat the Defender and heal 5 from base. So a good momentum swinging play for Nick. Elijah now in an interesting spot. Just going to put down the Consortium Star Viper. And then in response, another Emperor's Royal Guard for Nick. Approaching just 30 minutes left. Here in the round. And 
And it looks like Boba Fett will take the Royal Guard off the board. And Nick, once again, appeared to claim the initiative. And it's going to be Bosk for Elijah, trying to put on some more pressure. Knowing that he's running out of time in this game. Nick waiting for just the right moment for Palpatine to deploy. Twelve damage on Nick's base, no damage dealt yet to Elijah's base. And right off the bat, Nick is going to throw down a super laser blast, which is going to clean up the board. And just like that, Elijah, all the way back to square one. And Elijah will follow that up with a Darth Vader. Certainly not a bad follow-up play as he's going to be able to reload the board right away. And it's going to be a Viper Probe Droid. So we get to see Nick's hand. We see Emperor's Royal Guard and Overwhelming Barrage and Vanquish. Now this will keep initiative on Nick's side of the table. And he does have the Vanquish. So we know, if nothing else, he does have an immediate answer for Vader. Elijah choosing not to resource any cards. And there is the Vanquish. The Vanquish immediately coming down, removing Darth Vader from the board. And the Viper Probe Droid into base. So now 15 damage on base for Nick. And here comes Colonel Ularin. So some healing into play now for Nick. Could certainly have an impact. If you're Elijah, you don't want that. You've learned to stay on the board. And he's going to play down Greedo. Very likely going to be the Royal Guard. There's the Royal Guard. Another damage healed from Nick's base. He's down to 13 on. Elijah trying to think the best way to maneuver this situation. He's just going to claim the initiative. He does have a couple attackers there in the ground arena, but if you're Nick, you got to feel like you're in a pretty good spot to stabilize this game and force a deciding Game 3 in this match. Well, 
with Colonel Ularen being in play. The Royal Guard does have Sentinel. Which is a real problem here. The chat making some excellent points. We are getting down under 25 minutes left in the round. And if it is 1-1, they would both receive a loss. So Overwhelming Barrage is going to come down, give Greedo an additional plus 2, plus 2 for the turn. That will take the Royal Guard off the board. See how Nick responds. The Greedo now a 5-3 for the turn. Does he have an immediate answer for the Greedo? So another copy of Vigilance for Nick is going to defeat Greedo. And the trigger off of Greedo, two damage, will be dealt to Yularen there. But another five damage healed off of Nick's base, and definitely not a good spot for Elijah. Just going to go three into base with the Viper Probe Droid. And then Yularen 2 to base. If you're Nick, you definitely want to keep Yularen on the board. And now Seasoned Shore Trooper. Seasoned Shore Trooper at this stage, a 4 power. And Yularen... Going in there. Damage on to Shore Trooper. And here comes Palpatine. Palpatine into play. And the season Shore Trooper over to Nick. And then he's also going to play down the Super Laser Technician. Now, Nick in control of this game, too. Closing in on just 20 minutes left in the round, though. Time could be a major role. Neither one of these players would want it to end at 1 1. Elijah does have the initiative, trying to decide what plays he can make here that would give him any chance in this game. And I think he's going to go ahead and scoop this one up or you know, just counting his resources. Time is definitely going to be a factor in this match. Just don't see any way for Elijah to get back in this at this stage. Palpatine has completely stabilized the game. So another Viper probe droid. We will get to see Nick's hand. And my goodness, what a hand. 
Reinforcement Walker. He's got double takedown, Death Trooper, Power of the Dark Side, Barrage. So anything that comes down on Elijah's side of the board is not going to stay there. So the Death Trooper into play. That will deal an extra couple damage to the seasoned Shore Trooper. And we'll take out Viper Probe Droid in the process. And Elijah's going to play another copy of Darth Vader. And that is another excellent point called out by chat. That is three damage on the seasoned Shore Trooper, so that is enough to defeat the Shore Trooper. He only has three HP. The seasoned Shore Trooper should not be on the board currently. But Elijah does pick up the seventh Fleet Defender off of Darth Vader. And it looks like Elijah's trying to decide where this ambush goes. And I believe the ambush goes into Siege and Shore Trooper, but again... The seasoned Shore Trooper should not have still been on the board. Okay, no, he ambushed into Palpatine. So they did correct to the seasoned Shore Trooper. It is removed, and then the takedown is going to follow up the ambush from Vader and the takedown, another takedown. So 7th Fleet Defender, Darth Vader, they're both gone. And Elijah down to no board once again. And now Palpatine will swing in. For four onto Elijah's base. So we got the Shore Trooper issue resolved. And now, once again, Elijah in a very tough spot here, and it he's got no units in hand. No units in hand. Nick will go three to base. Super laser technician down onto the board for Nick. And then Palpatine will swing in for four. And he does use the on attack trigger from Palpatine to defeat the laser technician, giving him an extra resource and an extra card. And it is pretty clear at this point, Elijah just... He's got no way to, to do anything here. There's no way back into this, really. It doesn't appear that way. And here comes the reinforcement walker for Nick. And he's going to discard that top card, heal three more. And then waylay is the response from Elijah. Reinforcement Walker back to the hand. That will allow Nick to claim the initiative. And another waylay here as he bounces the Death Trooper back to hand. Well, 
looks like Elijah did pick up a unit, but again, don't don't really see this doing anything at this stage in the game. Nick has a hand full of tons of outs and tons of options to remove anything that Elijah plays. He has Palpatine still on the board. And there it is. That's going to do it. Elijah does go ahead and scoop up there, and that is going to even things out at one game apiece between Elijah and Nick here in round four, but that game took quite a while. Palpatine was able to stabilize and take control in the middle stage of that game, and Nick never really looked back. But now time is certainly an issue. There's only just under 14 minutes left in the round. And you can already see it. These guys, are their movements are quicker. They know that time is of the essence. And if they don't want a double loss here, they're going to have to play quickly. So we are getting ready to go for... Game number three, final deciding game between Boba Green and Pout Blue. And it looks like chat is very, very sided with Palpatine Blue. A lot of Palpatine fans in chat. And it looks like chat did catch a glimpse of one of our three cats here. <laughs> Definitely... Looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. So, Greedo is the start for Elijah. And there was no turn one play. So, no, no turn one play for Nick. But he does have a turn two play there. There's resupply. And then Greedo will go into base for three. Again, you can see both players playing quickly. They know that... Going to have to move a little quicker in this game to get this match completed with a winner. Both players using their resupply, ramping up. We know Boba Fett very likely to come in this turn. Another resupply for Nick. Now up to six resources. And another three damage for Greedo. So Greedo putting in some work here in game three. And it is Viper Probe Droid coming down. We... Get to take a look at Nick's hand. We got Super Laser Blast, Power of the Dark Side, Darth Vader, and Avenger. Well, we do know what is probably going to be played next turn. Riding kind of on the wall with that hand. Boba Fett deployed another four damage to base. Ten damage on Nick's base now, and Elijah does have control of the board, able to put the Star Viper into space. Here comes Vader, and we already know that Nick has a Super Laser Blast in his hand. So this board that Elijah has will certainly not be sticking around much longer at all. So Darth Vader ambushes into the Viper Probe Droid, Super Laser Technician, coming into play off of Vader's ability. And now the play back over to Elijah. And 
And so attacking, Elijah looks like he's going to attack with everything, and Nick Three damage from Star Viper, three damage from Greedo, and the Waylay putting Vader back to hand. Boba into base for four as well. Now he is able to ready a couple resources. Don't think he's done that yet off of the attack trigger from Boba. Just eight and a half minutes left in the round. We know that Nick has the super laser blast. 20 points of damage on Nick's base. You've got to know that super laser blast has to come down now, right? It has to. Nick does have the initiative. And Nick's going to start us out right away with the Super Laser Blast. And now we are back to the beginning. No units on the board, and Elijah does actually have some plays, though. We saw getting to the late game in Game 2, Elijah... Ended up with a hand of just multiple events, so he can respond here. But Palpatine still in a very, very good position. So Elijah will start us out with Cartel Spacer. And Nick just claims the initiative. Nick in a great spot. He's got plenty of options. But the clock is not on Nick's side here. We do know that Avenger is in hand. He's going to play Power of the Dark Side. That will force Elijah to defeat the Cartel Spacer. And then in response, a Greedo. And then Death Trooper immediately defeating Greedo, dealing the two damage. And Greedo whiffs on the trigger this time around. Looks like Elijah attempting to play Bosk. Some talk with the judge at the table. Not sure what the discussion is here. Looked like Elijah wanted to play Bosk, was going to go in and ambush the Death Trooper. And that is the play. Now, a good point from chat. He went to play Bosk and then. Maybe wanted to not play it, but he's not going to use the ambush here. He'll just use the 
the action ability from Palpatine instead to deal the damage to Bosk. And that'll bring Palp into play. And Bosk over to Nick's side of the board. And then here comes Yularen's going to start healing some damage. And we'll move on to the next turn. Elijah does have the initiative, but now Nick is in full control. The question is, can he win before time runs out in this round? We know that Nick is in a great spot, complete control of the board. Closing in on just three and a half minutes. Now Elijah has to decide how to address this situation. And I, I don't think there's a good answer for that. Now the only thing that Elijah maybe could do here, he has not used the epic action on Energy Conversion Lab in this game, so does have a battalion in hand that might be a play. He might try to take out one of the units on Nick's side of the board. But I, I think he's still deciding on a resource. And he's going to put the barrage down. Obviously, overwhelming barrage doesn't do anything at this stage. No units on the board. And now just two minutes, two minutes left in the round. And some more discussion going on with the judge at the table. Elijah yet to make his first move for this turn, and he is going to use the epic action on Energy Conversion Lab. I'm assuming it's probably going to be Steadfast Battalion. It is. Steadfast Battalion will take out the Bosk. And that'll be four damage back onto the Battalion. And the Overwhelm will get through and deal one damage there to Nick's base. And then Nick's going to respond with an Emperor's Royal Guard, which is going to heal some damage. He's got the Yularen in play. But that is it. The timer has run out, and maybe we get an extension. Looks like we've got four minutes back on the clock. I think, I think that's probably the right call in this situation. We have had several instances where we did have to have the judge involved throughout this match. and Looks like these players are going to have a few extra minutes to try to finish it up. Let's see how Nick wants to go about this. Are we going to see the Avenger... Nope, he's going to play Darth Vader here. Darth Vader's going to come down. And he's going to grab the Inferno 4. Which is going to allow some cycling here. One on top, one on the bottom.
And then Elijah just claims the initiative after the ambush from Vader will take out the battalion. And then Palpatine's ability will take effect, take the shield off of the 7th Fleet Defender, destroying the Darth Vader. Clock back down to two minutes. We've got 10 damage on base for Elijah. Can we get this wrapped up? So Elijah with the initiative he has an overwhelming barrage in hand. I believe we see a Fett's fire spray. And it appears to be a no good to me dead. Looks like he might go for the is it the overwhelming barrage here. It's exactly what he's going to do. Overwhelming barrage down onto Seventh Fleet Defender. The Seventh Fleet Defender will become a five four. He'll get to do five damage. He's going to destroy Inferno four. And and then a couple damage onto Yuvaran. And then Nick with a huge response, an overwhelming barrage of his own to take out the 7th Fleet Defender. But then Elijah, no good to be dead, taps down the Palpatine. And then seasoned Shore Trooper being played there. The board we see 17 damage onto Elijah's base now. It appears that time is up. Elijah with the initiative. But facing down a huge board for Nick. I don't really think there's anything in hand that do a lot for Elijah here. He does have Fett's Fire Spray still in it. Looks like that top card might be Change of Heart. And here comes Fett's Fire Spray. And an immediate response for Nick is the Avenger, and that will defeat the Fire Spray. And that's going to be that's seven damage on the base. So 24 damage on Elijah's base now. Just one damage shy. We're looks like we are moving on to another turn here. And at this stage, Elijah does have the initiative, but just one attack from Nick will finish this game. And it looks like that is going to do it.